Hello students, a very warm welcome to Meso Study Biology classes. Now in today's class, I am going to talk about one of the very important topic for your NEET examination that is a menstrual cycle. So as you can see the menstrual cycle, the whole cycle it lasts for around 28 days. 28 days. On an average, it can vary in some ladies, in some women it is around 30 days, 31 days or in some ladies it is less also. So, it menstrual cycle it starts at the age of 13 to 15 year. Start at the age of 13 to 15 year. Right? This is termed as a menarche. Whereas around the age of 50 years, stop, which is termed as a menopause, it ends at 50 years. Right? So, this is termed as a menarche. This is termed as a menopause. Right? Now, between 15 to 50 years, this is considered as a reproductive stage of a women life. Right? Is it clear to you? Now, the whole cycle, whole menstrual cycle is divided into various phases. So, I'll be, I'll be telling you about all these phases one by one. Now, the first phase, as you can see, that is termed as a menstrual phase. Menstrual phase is that phase which lasts for around 3 to 4 days. How many days? 3 to 4 days. In these 3 to 4 days, there is a menstrual flow. The endometrium which is formed, this is a diagram showing the endometrium. Now, this endometrium breaks and that leads to the menstrual flow. Right? Is it clear to you? Is it fine? Now, next is termed as a follicular phase. So, follicular phase is that phase in which the follicles, they start growing. The name itself indicate. Now, this is an ovarian cycle in which earlier, like in starting, we have is a primary follicle. Now, this primary follicle, it grows and it forms a graphene follicle. Now, how does this growth happen? This is because of the two important hormone, which is a follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone concentration increases throughout the menstrual cycle till the ovulation occur. Now, this is a follicular phase. Now, listen very carefully. The follicles, they are growing and there is an increasing concentration. You can uh, make it like this. Like there is actually an uh, increasing concentration and I mean, slowly and slowly their concentration increases. Right? Is it clear to you? Now, what is the function of this FSH and LH? The function of FSH and LH is the maturation of follicles. Now, at the day 14, can you see this day 14? Day 14. So, this was the first day, then second, then third, then fourth. After that, in between the cycle we have is a day 14. Now, as this ovulation is proceeding, as there is a growth of these follicles, simultaneously there is increase in the concentration of estrogen. Now, estrogen is synthesized by the growing follicles. These growing follicles, they are growing because of the FLH and FSH and they are also secreting one hormone which is a estrogen. Now, what actually this estrogen doing? Estrogen, as its concentration is increasing, they help in the formation of endometrium. It causes mitosis in the uterus lining so that the endometrium formation can occur. Endometrium is a lining of uterus. So, simultaneously there will be formation of the lining of uterus. Now, what will happen? At the day 14, there will be ovulation. How will this ovulation occur? Increasing estrogen level. It reaches a peak at day 14 because of these growing follicle. It reaches maximum at day 14. Once it reaches maximum at day 14, it causes a positive feedback to the interior pituitary to increase the concentration of this LH. Is it clear to you? Now, increasing estrogen concentration help in increasing the concentration of LH. Once the LH concentration increases, 
from this graphene follicle our oocyte will be released now oocyte which was present now this graphene follicle which was present in ovary that graphene follicle will move and come to the end of the ovary or near to the membrane of ovary and releases the oocyte and this particular oocyte formation this is termed as a ovulation process this is because of the increasing concentration of lh and this is termed as a lh surge lh surge one of another very important question for your neat examination this is termed as a lh surge now what will happen next this estrogen this particular estrogen will causes the formation of these disintegrated structure which is termed as a corpus luteum now whatever which is left behind once oocyte is released it will manage itself and it will form a corpus luteum now listen very carefully whereas this oocyte because it was present at the boundary it will go out and it will enter into the fallopian tube now once it will enter into the fallopian tube there is one particular portion which is a ampullary isthmic portion it will go there it will remain there and wait for the sperm to come and in the uh, uh, meantime when the sperm will come the fertilization will happen so that is a separate story now this particular once is whatever which is left behind it forms one structure which is a corpus luteum so corpus luteum formation is also because of estrogen is also because of estrogen now this lh which is formed because uh, this estrogen has causes an increase in the lh and which causes the ovulation process now there will be a corpus luteum formation this corpus luteum will causes increase in the concentration of another hormone which is a progesterone which is a progesterone is it clear to you now this is forming this particular hormone which is a progesterone now what is the function of progesterone now everything is formed estrogen is forming now what is the use of this progesterone estrogen help in formation of this endometrium whereas this progesterone help in the maintenance of this endometrium so that it should remain in this size only once there will be a mating once there will be a meeting between a sperm and an egg there will be formation of the zygote so that zygote can come and implant to this position now this increasing concentration of estrogen and progesterone it causes a negative impact on fsh and lh and it causes decrease in the concentration of fsh and lh suppose there is no mating suppose there is no formation of the zygote in that case the corpus luteum will disintegrate into the corpus albicans it will stop synthesizing progesterone and estrogen and the progesterone concentration it goes down as the progesterone concentration goes down endometrium will break there will be no further maintenance of endometrium no formation of endometrium it will break down and it will come back to the first stage that is a menstrual flow phase is it clear to you so overall the whole phase is there are three phases menstrual flow phase the follicular phase and the third one is a secretory phase or the luteal phase is it clear to you was it very easy or was it was difficult i know this uh, hormone synthesis what causes the formation of hormone what we are actually the positive feedback sucker where actually the negative feedback sucker it everything is uh, like i know this is a big confusion for you all so hope after this session after this diagram after watching these this particular session the uh, like like doubts which is related to the menstrual cycle hope it is clear to you if it is not clear to you comment on this comment section and uh, we are always with you to help you now let's wind up the session here we'll be meeting in the next one we'll be discussing some other important topic till then take care keep watching thank you so much students for watching this